So let's see it started, mate. It's uh, Melbourne beat West Coast on uh, oh yesterday, and it, not that result that stood out to me, but Simon Goodwin's comments after the win. We, we respect every opposition that we come up against every week, and it's the same way every week. And we've got a team that compete unconditionally all the time, and that's what I love about our playing group, and that makes us really hard to play against. So the results in the end take care of themselves, the, the ladder takes care of itself, and the performances continue. So um, as I said, we don't, we don't look at last year. We don't look at, you know, things that we, things in the season that happen, that we'll learn from, and you know, there'll be times when we get beaten, and we'll, we'll continue to grow from that. That's just what AFL footy is about. It's it's a tough industry to win at. We'll continue to push hard. The most simple um, comments can be overlooked, but Melbourne are the most competitive team across the board. They're the number one contested um, possession differential, and you can see that. And it's not just a midfield. It's a forward line and it's a back line that are prepared to get their hands dirty. Brayshaw and Langdon back with a flight last yep. week against St Kilda when the game was won. Yep. They just competed unconditionally. Yep. And they ended up winning contested ball on the weekend by 19. They've only been beaten once this year by mm. GWS in round five by four. It's good minus time. four. But they've won every other time. Can I also just say on that, the message that was sent through the week with Max Gorn to me spoke volumes about where they're at. So this is a, they are still very, very, no thought about resting Max Gorn coming off a knee injury the week before. He's, and this is a trip to Western Australia. Yeah. You know, you, no, I don't think anyone in the footy world would have blinked if they said, yeah, we're going to give Max this weekend off. He's a bit sore with a knee. It's a big, long season. Everyone's resting players everywhere. We're going to Perth, blah, blah. Simon Goodwin said, no chance. We're not in, we're not in that. That's not where we're at. No. I love that messaging. And another another team who are big on contested ball and they're second in the competition um, had a great win against GWS and Michael Voss's words afterwards stood out to me. So I think as you're, um, you know, I guess having a, a transformational year and that's essentially what we are. Um, we're having these, you know, great transformational moments and um, that they're all really important to have. Um, that along your journey, that you can have really defining wins and. Um, it really doesn't matter how the rest of the year plays out because it doesn't change this moment. I love the part that I love about it is it doesn't really matter what happens for the rest of the year because you can't change this moment. So what that says to me is internally they are so focused on the opportunity that's right in front of them right there right now. Mm. They would have set themselves for GWS. We don't have that big. We don't have our big H. We're playing against a side that have got plenty to play for. We know they're going to bring emotion, but in the end, what we do. And the way that we execute our plan is all that we will tell the will be the tail of the tape, and they get it done and they tick it off and they celebrate that and they can stay in that moment and feel good about that moment without sacrificing so or getting ahead of themselves. Transformational is just experience what we experience, learn from that, move to the next, as opposed to saying we've got to win three of the next four, four of the next five. Correct, but trans- transformational is to be able to move from a lesser version of yourself to a better version of yourself. And that's this, that's the journey that Carlton are on. And, but it's the journey that the coach is happy to take them along as well. And it's so empowering because it doesn't have you believing that you need to be a certain thing other than looking at right now, what is right in front of us right now and how can we put our best efforts into now? Okay. It frees you. Compare it's that. Free. I know you got Essendon. Can you go? I don't know where you had them on your list. Can you go to them next then? Because Essendon fans would be saying, why can't we do that? Why well, can't our coach have us experience transformational moments? There was one last week. Well, they, It lasted for 20 minutes. But Essendon did last year. And if you're an Essendon supporter and you're like, they've been kicked and they've been pilloried. And there's, there's a very good reason for that. Because for me... And as Ben Ratton said after the game, they have been uncompetitive and that is in the contest and in the general flow of play. And that was the thing that was most disappointing. Scoreboard in the end probably flattered us a fair bit. You know, I think um, Sydney's opportunities in front of goal, you know, I think the scoreboard didn't quite reflect the game. You know, that's, you know, we're just competent to be beaten, you know, in a lot of areas, but in particular the contest, you know, their contest work and their pressure, their tackling so much better than ours. That was what was really disappointing. So Sydney only won contested ball by 12. So that's not, a, like double figures is, is significant, but yep. it's not a massive number. I mean, 
the Bulldogs beat Collingwood by 40 on Friday night. So that was a smashing in around, around the ball. But the thing that got, so if you don't win contested ball, you still need to tackle. Essendon only had 52 tackle attempts for a whole game. Let alone tackle. 52 tackle attempts. 30 tackles in total. And had 30 effective tackles. Archie Perkins was their highest with five tackle attempts. Callum Mills is in the middle. Right. Had 13 tackles off 15 okay. attempts. Okay. The whole Essendon midfield didn't match those attempts and, and um, effective tackles. There was no willingness to work, to put a pressure on the opponent, and we, we spoke about him just trying to rack up numbers, potentially. Mm-hmm. But it, it, there's no, there was no go. And the leaders, McGrath, stood up a month ago and said, we need to own this. Um, so Hep will say, there's nothing wrong with this. Enjoying our footy. You're not going to enjoy your footy if you don't have a crack. Let me take it to the next level. Then. Because it, we know that, right? And everyone's talking that. Numbers. Mm. You just talked about a coach has got his group where he wants them that are living this transformational yep. life and have, you know, uh, overcoming it. doesn't matter who's there and who's not. You know, Mackay out. Da, da, da. Does this come back to the coach? Is the responsibility for this and the – so Ben – so this is the question now. So the numbers are one thing and the game is there and everyone's whacked them and rightfully so. They deserve the whacking. But what happens now? Is this a coach problem? Is this his inability to get them to play – at that level, contest from to contest, week to week, because Michael Voss has been able to do it, or it seems to be and appears to be able to do it right now with his group. We always go back to the senior coach, and yes, he has a very important role to play in it. What we can't escape, though, is that the players and the staff are part of the environment of the football club. Now, how is that environment? When you're not winning, it's challenging, but you really find out about everyone around it. So how is the leadership from the CEO, the football manager, the the senior coach, the assistant coaches, the leaders on field, how aligned are they? How connected are they? And when the pressure comes on, you either crack or you stand up. Are you worried? If you, do you think they're not aligned? Well, if you look at Essendon, you know, for a long, a long period, they just haven't been able to, when the pressure comes on, they have been, a, they've been a club that just haven't been able to, stick fat, knuckle down, and grind their way out of it. Now, there is an opportunity to do that now. They don't, they don't need to make finals, but they need to, they need to lock in and grind themselves out of this moment by moment. And it's going to be investment on and off the field by everyone that's, in, that's got a red set. Why would they do it now if they haven't done it up till now? They've done it because pressure finds the weak spot. And, and, there, and, and there, there are cracks, and there has been breaks that have occurred. But you've, you can always... If we take Michael Voss's terminology, and in a very different circumstance, because you're at the other end of the spectrum, really struggling for it, nothing that's happened can be changed, and nothing that's coming up we can influence now. But you can look after this moment. So you break it down to this training session, the next team meeting, the next conversation you have with someone that you're looking in the eye. You're really present rather than just doing lip service. But he like, would have had these, surely. Yeah, but you, but he you would can, have already had them. But. You, you, we, we all know, and we're going deep here, but we all know that you've been in situations where you, 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 you've got the idea of connecting with someone. You've got the idea of, hey, this is what we want to do. You've got the idea of wanting to do a bit better. But until you truly believe it, it's that last five or, five or ten percent in every person that until you give that, you're not going to, you don't so get everything. How does he feel? And I'm, I'm, I'm honing in on Ben Rutten because, you know, I know your philosophy is it's much bigger, and it is. Mm. You know what history tells us. It's the right? it's the easy it's the easy change because well it, no, it's not going to change though. This is not going to change. But, but but you know why it's the easy change because it changes the psyche of everyone else in the organisation. Mm. That if this guy is held accountable yeah. and and he's he's under massive pressure or he's the one that has to go, and then then you then self interest comes in and you're geez I better change my attitude. That it's it's always an indictment on playing groups. Of course it is, but if they're they going to be there. If they don't come. No. So I accept that. You accept that. That's. But the, the reality is, does he doubt himself right now and his ability to get his group playing at the level that is required? Yes, absolutely he does. And, and All right. Can I take it a step further? I know this is not one of yours. This is one of mine, but okay. it, it dovetails no, into no, no, this. No, 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 no. Come on, mate. Like, this is the buck stops here. I know, Gaz. but this is part of this conversation. With when you're talking about <laughs> Luke Parker right, you, but, and Dylan Shield. Well, no, yeah. no. So this extra, yeah, extrapolates yeah, 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 it out. Yeah, good point. Good point. So 
you've got a team that are now doubting themselves that won't tackle, that won't even attempt to tackle, right? And they're getting run over the top of, and they get, and they get, and then they get start getting bullied. So that's what it is. That's Luke. I know I didn't particularly like what Luke Parker did, but that's all right. We're in a competitive, you know. He's doing this one. You know, you're yeah. scared. You're scared. You're scared. Mm. Now Matthew Lloyd is an emotional man, and I know him really well, and I 100 percent understand where he was coming from on the weekend when he got frustrated and had this to say. You never ever want to be walked over in life or disrespected in any way. And I thought Dylan Shear was disrespected in a way you never want to be treated as a footballer. And this was the next contest. I would have ploughed straight through Parker here and got him to the ground and said, you will never ever treat me like that again. Now that, I, I understand exactly what Lloyd is saying. He's an emotional, proud, spirited, Fierce competitor and champion of the Essendon Footy Club, and he's hurting because he's looking at his side with no response. And that's exactly no that, response. That's exactly where it comes from. So when you have invested so much of your time and energy into an organisation, into a cause, and then you see that organisation not live the values or at the level of competitiveness that you expect, that hurts. So in the end, it doesn't matter who's hurt outside of the outside of the arena. It doesn't even matter if Brett Ratton's, so if, if I'm um, sorry, Ben Rutten is the one that um, is hurting. It doesn't matter if the assistant coach, doesn't matter if the, the supporters, the players are the ones that need to respond. The only ones that can respond. So if you have something like a coach that changes and you said that, that that's a prickle, if, a, if an opposition player disrespects you and basically calls out your competitiveness and your, um, your courage, mm. that's, that's, that's a needle that doesn't always hit immediately, but what do you reckon Essendon are talking about? Like, they, like when they go in this week, it's going to be around. But it's like, good, what but do we stand for? Yeah, here? I know, and I'm not. I don't bash. Are we going to get another line in the sand moment? Well, but yeah, but this is what you want. Do you want the response from you if you're competitively inclined? Do you want the response then and there, or do you want to wait until you have another week of being kicked in the head by the media and everyone else, and then you go, "Why didn't we respond?" Therefore, we've got to respond. Well, it does say something about the individuals if you can't respond immediately. But so Essendon play Richmond this weekend, and Essendon's capacity to actually like there, it doesn't really matter whether they win the game or not. Winning the game is not a priority for Essendon coming into this weekend. It's not. The priority is hitting the first five minutes with as much energy and gusto as you possibly can and establishing yourself in the contest. Because if you don't do that, you're not going to win anyway. Did we not have this conversation two weeks ago? Yes, we did. And that's um, that's that's the situation that an underperforming club finds themselves in. And the expectations were high. We knew they played good opponents early. But they've lost their mojo, they've lost their way, and they need to find it. And Macca Four. says, Gary doesn't like what Parker did. He gets what Lloyd's saying. Talk about having a bit each way. No, it's not, Macca. I understand the emotion of Matthew Lloyd. And that, I, look, I'm not either way with Luke Parker because Luke Parker goes and does it. Had it been someone else, Luke Parker never shirks. So from that point of view, there's they're not the issue I would have if it was someone else who says something like that and doesn't back it up. Agreed. This And... I'm going to sort of square up a little bit here. I don't have them in my buck stops, but Collingwood only had 106 contested possessions in the weekend. They got done by 40. They got smashed around the ball. So I'm having a crack at Essendon. That 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 around the ball performance by Collingwood was was not was uncollingwood like. They're generally a lot better in the in the effort to go and win the footy, and that was a really poor result yeah. on Friday. And then they'll be they'll be challenged to respond. Another team I want to talk about Hawks. I what I've seen. What I saw on the weekend and what I've seen in the first part of the year worries me about them being a one-trick pony. They they get the ball from the back half, they spread it, their forwards lengthen, they create a lot of space through the midfield and they can score heavily from the back. But when that doesn't come through, and that's pretty football, when that doesn't come through, I'm really concerned about what that looks like when we get into winter months when you can't play as pretty. Yeah, the fundamentals of the game were quite difficult to watch today, I think. Um, you know smothered in open play and dropping dropping handballs and um, handball into people's feet and that sort of thing. I think we invited a lot of pressure from them and that was a frustrating part of the game. From a Hawthorne point of view, new coach, nine weeks in, is this about layering now? So they play that way, now they've got to add the layers. Well, even those comments speak to why we didn't move the ball well mm-hmm. or why we didn't put chains of offence together. Yep. Hawthorne 
are a bottom four contested ball side and they are bottom four tackle differential side. You're not going to win games in the middle of winter if you can't improve that. Great point. You got one more. I cut you off. Yeah. You I, I, well. And I just want to, I'm going to go back to the Essendon one. Yep. This is where lead, on field leaderships, you, Ben Rutten can't do anything from the sideline. Mm-hmm. And if that challenge comes, and I, I understand what Matty Lloyd says, but you don't need to be a thug there. It's the next contested ball. And the best sides in the competition, the best sides in our, in, in, if we think about the teams that we've respected and, and seen over the years, they have individuals that can change the course of that team. Yeah. In the moment, in that contest, for that quarter, for that game. Yeah. But it also, you, you have transformational leaders that through actions change the attitude of the team. Mm. So I'll like, say so Paddy Cripps for Carlton is, is in the process of doing it and can do it. Um, you look at uh, like probably Jack Viney's the one for Melbourne, but but then others have come around like Stevie May at the back. Like they, if you think about the best teams, they've got guys that when the next hard ball is there okay. to be won, or the next the next courageous act, and there's not that. Many. Joy Corbell did it. Joy, that was that was brilliant. Yeah, where well, was, was the rest of them jumping on? And and yeah, maybe we need to. Maybe I hope I definitely hope that that would be celebrated would be. by the Essendon. Uh, in, yeah, internally in their review and put that on a pedestal so that you get that, that gets as much airtime as the negative, the negative response. Right. This is a positive. Oh, I good. really like to get to a positive. Good. I heard some stuff after the game. St Kilda, great um, win. Yeah, their last 45 minutes to, to run over Geelong was awesome. They're playing some great football. They've really um, you know, surpassed my expectations. And there seems to be some real grit in what they do. But I loved Paddy Ryder's comments after the game about his fellow ruck partner, Rowan Marshall. Look, I just said to him that he's probably not 100% fit. Um, and I can see that. And I've played through injury before. And you just got to keep getting out there. So, And all it takes sometimes is for one of your teammates or coaches to come up and just tell you that they appreciate your effort. So that's what I said. I said I appreciate your effort. I know you're hurting a little bit, but you're still so good for us. Love it. Team. Oh, what you think about? I mean, it, it's a lot easier to do. Leadership is easy when you've got momentum. Leadership is easy when you're winning. Yeah, yeah. So, so he, he's any St Kilda person or any Melbourne person, um, Carlton, you're coming from a position of authority. So preface by saying these are the easy times to lead. Mm. But I just love the sense of that. Mm. Now, it's like I value what you are giving. I know you don't need to be a 10 out of 10 all the time to, to earn my respect. Yeah. And when I know that you're not quite at your peak, I know that you're carrying a little bit, but you're giving me what you're giving me, I appreciate that. And when you feel that from your teammates, when you feel that from your, from other people in, in the environment, it just makes you want to give 100% of what you're capable of at that very moment. And, geez, we've got some teams at the moment that just you can feel that momentum and they're building it. It's a great point because it talks about care for one another, which is a soft, fuzzy sort of concept, but it's so important when you're thinking outside of yourself. And, and gratitude. And I, I just, I mean, Paddy Ryder has been like, he's not a journeyman, but he's been around the place. He's, he's played at multiple clubs. He's coming towards the end of his time. He's had good times and bad times, challenges, times when he's been up and down. He only had he, like eight or nine touches, three goals, set up a couple. He was a bit part. And these really important ones. Oh, amazing. When he's, the, when he's in the ruck, those and, touches and, are important. And, 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 you know, it's probably a, a reflection for him too. I know that I'm not physically ever going to be where yeah. I have been before, but I can contribute and I can make my teammates better.